Welcome back to the Vanessa G Fitcast. I'm Vanessa Gillette Pozos, and here with me is Omar Pozos. What's up, our VGFN fam? How's everybody doing, Ness? How are you today? I am. I'm feeling good. You know, we have uh, Coach Alex coming in this weekend to visit us as we're recording, and then I'm going to be going to Miami next weekend on a girls trip. So yeah. I think when this podcast episode comes out, I'll have just gotten back from Miami and I'm going to be feeling real good. <laughs> Did you notice my faint? Yeah. Like in the background, I was like, what the hell? Like, why don't I get to go on the girls trip? I told you, know? you, you should <laughs> schedule your own trip, but you know. I know. No, Zoe and I will get back and we'll throw a party of our own. So no need to worry. We'll, we'll be pretty busy ourselves. Yeah. Dog park party. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, today we are talking about three mistakes that are holding you back from weight loss results. And this topic really kind of came about because I was thinking about oftentimes, you know, you might have a client who they feel like they're doing everything right, but they're not seeing the results. And when we dig in, we like really peel the onion back and look closer at what they are, what they are doing, where they are putting their effort. We'll often find that there are a few commonalities that might hold people back from really being able to break through and actually see the results they want. Because you could be, you know, doing things right on paper and you might say you're doing all the things right, but there might be a couple of things, a couple little mistakes that you're making that can be the difference maker for you and whether or not you actually get results from even doing the right things. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, no, I, I love this topic. And when we were reading it beforehand, practicing or not practicing, but just learning, um, I love it because you're right. Sometimes it's the little things that you're not doing that are keeping you from really achieving your goals, right? Because it's not about adding things to your plate. It's about removing the stuff that's not working so we can get you to your goals faster and more efficiently. And listen, I'll be the first one to admit, I need help when it comes to this stuff. So I'm excited to chat and excited to dive into um, a little bit more about this topic. So let's do it. Yeah. So the first reason, the first mistake that you might be making that is holding you back from actually seeing the weight loss results you want is that you are not consistent or accurate enough. And emphasis on the word enough there, because you might be saying, well, I am consistent. I am accurate. You know, I, I am tracking my food. I'm going to the gym. Like I am consistent. I am accurate, but it might not be accurate enough for the results that you want. Yeah. Break that down for us. Like, what, what do you mean by that? Yeah. So like you can be doing a good job, but if you're, you know, putting like a, a a B minus level effort in, but you want an A plus body, you probably aren't going to get there exactly where you want to get there. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, you know, often see people, maybe they, they say that they're hitting their macros, like they are tracking their food. But when we dig in, we find that when they are tracking their food, they're not really measuring out their portions very accurately. Mm, They're just eyeballing things. They kind of just, you know, throw it on the plate and be like, yeah, that, that looks right. That looks like, you know, my, my serving of rice that looks like my serving of fruit, like whatever it is. But the reality is they may be way over underestimating because they're just eyeballing their portion sizes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm guilty of this one myself. Like sometimes I'll even pour, you know, a sauce or a condiment. I'm like, oh yeah, that looks like 50 grams. And then I go to track it. It's actually like 80 or 90. And over time, like you said, over the week, that average of calories per day adds up. And next thing you know, you're like, oh my gosh, why am I not seeing the scale move? Or why am I not seeing any physical changes? Well, like you said, if you dig in and, and go back to the basics, that's you're, you're seeing some, some uh, issues there. Exactly. And it's a fine line because the goal is never to be obsessive with weighing and measuring and tracking. But there are certain phases of our journey where if you are in a phase, like in our program, we focus on fat loss during what we call our refine phase. This Mm -hmm. is when we implement some of our really proprietary techniques to help our ladies lose the body fat in a way that doesn't feel restrictive. But even though we are helping them lose the body fat without a heavy level of restriction, like the things that they've tried in the past, there is still a certain level of discipline that needs needs to be applied in order to get the results. And one of those areas is making sure that you are actually tracking your food and that you are accurately tracking your food, or at least to the best of your capabilities. There's going to be times where we eyeball and it's a skill to develop. And we are going to, especially, you know, later on in our phases, work on that because we want to be able to move into more of an intuitive eating approach that involves eyeballing. But during certain phases, we have to be a little bit more accurate if we want to really make sure we can move the needle on our results. Yeah, absolutely. And one of my favorite analogies when it comes to this stuff or when I hear this stuff be brought up is like a credit card analogy, right? If you swipe, 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 and you have zero idea how much is in the bank, 
at one point or another, either we're going to get a call from the credit card companies or you're going to have a, hu- a husband, especially right now on Amazon Prime oh, Day that gosh. we've got going on. That's going to be like, what the hell? Like, why are we spending so much? And the other thing too is, you know, if you do have a larger goal weight in mind, you can be a little bit more lenient and you can get some results, right? Now, as you start to get the things dialed in and you want to get a little bit, like you said, more refined and you want to get a little bit more specific, you do have to start making some changes on these things so that you can ultimately get the results that you want because what has worked in the past may no longer work if your goals are different now. Exactly. And so some other things that I see people do that might be holding them back because they, you know, again, they're doing a good job overall, but they aren't consistent or accurate enough is that they're eating out too often. Mm. Now, if we're eating out super often, what ends up happening is we're not going to be very accurate with our tracking either because even in the best possible scenario, if you're you know going somewhere that has foods that are easier to track, you're going to ultimately find yourself where it's, we, we just don't know what people are putting into the foods, what the cook behind the, the counter is actually putting into the food. So even if they are providing with nutrition facts and you are tracking those exact facts, even if you go home and weigh it out, like you can really do the best possible job you can. But if you're eating out for most of your meals, there's going to be a large margin of error there to where you might be saying, I'm hitting my macros perfectly. Like I'm dead on. I don't know why this isn't working for me. But if you're the way you're hitting your macros is with entirely eating out foods, you may not actually be hitting your macros is essentially what's happening. There's just a lot of guesstimating that's going on basically. Yep. Something else that could happen is too much alcohol, you know, maybe drinking too much or too often. I know this comes up a lot during summertime as well. Um, You know, if we're, we're trying to go through like, you know, you and I both right now are working through some fat loss and that does require us to dial in our amount of drinking. Like there are definitely occasions where you and I want to drink, but we, either we are choosing not to, or we're maybe having just one drink. And we do have to apply some of that self-discipline, knowing that we are currently in a temporary phase that requires a little bit more of that discipline in order to be more accurate with yeah. essentially what we're trying to achieve. Um, I mean, I'll tell you, I think my phone knows that I'm in, in, in a fat loss phase right now because the amount of reels that I get with like cocktail recipes and margarita recipes. The and reason just, you get all those reels is <laughs> because, because I keep that's watching what you, them. <laughs> you send those to me. I, but, but they look so good, babe. Like, how can I not watch them? And I was like, oh, once we're down to this phase, I'm like, I want to try this. I want to try that. And I want to try that. Um, but the other thing too, that I think a lot of people also forget to talk about is not only, you know, how tough alcohol is on your body, but also what happens the next day. Obviously, if you have a couple of drinks, you're going to be a little groggy, sometimes a little hungover if you if you overdo it a, a bit much. But then it just sets you up for failure the next day because, you know, if you're groggy, if you're feeling hungover, the last thing you're going to want to do is go to the gym or the last thing you're going to want to do is make great choices the next day. So it, it it's really a compounding effect that comes from alcohol. And I'm not saying, you know, you don't, you don't, you can't drink to be able to achieve your goals. But I'm just saying, like you said, moderating, moderating it um, and, and not drinking too much or too often is a, a honestly, it's, it's a huge uh, help. Exactly. Another thing that I see happen is missing too many workouts. Mm. And so, you know, I've been guilty of this a hundred percent myself as well, but it's very, very easy, especially during, you know, maybe times of the year where you're busier or you're traveling more where, you know, it's easy to like, and we absolutely should allow ourselves some level of flexibility of, oh, you know, I didn't get my workout in on the day I planned on, but you know, that's okay. I'll just do, you know, less workouts this week and I'll get back to it next week. But if you're finding that week after week, you're telling yourself, I'm going to get in, you know, three workouts this week and you're, you know, only hitting that one or two and that just keeps happening over and over again, you have to be honest with yourself and really sit yourself down and say, okay, is the level of effort I'm putting into this matching my expectation for my results right now. Ooh, that's a good question. Because you can't be expecting a certain level of results if you're not matching that with your level of effort. And this isn't to, you know, shame anybody, make anybody feel bad. Cause that's like, I'm honestly, I am, I am guilty of this myself. I have done this myself. And that's why it's worth bringing up. If you are in a phase where you are expecting a certain level of weight loss results, you have to be honest with yourself about what level of effort you're putting in and what level of effort you want to put in. What level of effort is realistic for you to put in right now? Because if that what is realistic for you isn't matching what is your your expectations, then you need to have a conversation, you know, with your coach or with yourself and figure out 
maybe this isn't the right time for you to focus on this. Maybe there's another goal you can focus on that really matches the demands of your current lifestyle and your current desires, but then you can still work on the weight loss at another time when it is a little bit easier for you to focus on those things. Man, I love that one. That's such a great reminder, even for myself to be like, okay, if I want to look a certain way or have certain goals by, you know, September, October, then I got to put in the work. I got to put in the time. I got to put in the effort right now so that I can get to those goals. Otherwise, we're going to get to that date and I'm going to be like, oh, I wonder, you know, what I did wrong. And it's, it's, again, we're just not the effort is in mastering the expectations. Exactly. And we are all about progress, not perfection here. And that is not the goal of this podcast is not to make you feel like you have to be perfect by any means, but we need to be making consistent progress week over week if we want to see the results. It's that 1% better each and every day. And like we've talked about this many times before, but I always come back to the 80-20 rule where, you know, this can be applicable to a lot of different things. We talk about the 80-20 rule often in terms of your food quality. So in terms of, you know, if you can have 80% of your food, the 80% of your calories, 80% of what you're eating be coming from nutrient dense whole food sources that are going to be, you know, the most uh, beneficial for your health and are going to be the most accurate in terms of tracking then you are going to see the best results from that. Now, 80-20, it is a little bit of an abstract concept. And some people might be a little bit too lax with what the 80% versus the 20% means for them. They might think, oh, I am sticking to the 80-20 rule. But if you really take a step back and you're really honest with yourself, you might actually be closer to like 60-40. And the reality is if you're you know not following the 80-20, you're closer to the 60-40 you're not going to get the 100% results that you want. So remember to think about it as like that 80%, that should be like 80% of your calories on average are coming from nutrient-dense food. So if you're eating 2,000 calories, 1,600 of them should be from nutrient-dense whole foods. And that really should be only about that remaining 400 would actually be from your, your treat foods, your fun foods. And while for some people that might be a little bit more restrictive than they want to be long-term, the point of this, the point of this phase that you are in where you are focused on weight loss is that it isn't long-term. It is a short-term thing. And if you can focus on really dialing it in short-term, you're going to get to your results that you want faster. And it's going to end up being worth it in the long run, I promise. Yeah, with a lot, without the headaches, without the frustration, without you know you blaming yourself for, for one thing or another kind of thing. Yeah, and again, this, these are these are averages we're talking about. Of course, there's going to be days where you know that 80-20 is a little bit off, but you need to be honest with yourself. Are you averaging out about that 80-20 or are you realistically averaging out closer to the 60-40 or 50-50, something along those lines? Yeah, you know what's crazy? Um for myself, at least, Ness, I, I think that when stuff like this comes up and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I don't know, am I eating 80-20? Like, am I sticking with, you know, the things that I need to do? And with us being so busy with work and personal stuff, that's why sometimes I feel like having a coach that keeps you in alignment, that does these things for you so that you can actually use your capacity, your brand, your your bandwidth into your family, into your work, into your professional stuff. That's what makes the biggest difference because like with me working with my coach, like I don't have to worry about that stuff. That's what they're there for, for help, for support. And it just, it, it keeps the guest work out of, out of my own uh, head, but it also helps me focus on the things that I need to focus on while still having the body that I want. So that's why I'm like, having somebody in your corner, it's such a game changer. It just, it, like you said, it, it helps you get to your goals faster and more efficiently. Yeah. Well, can I put you on the spot? Yeah, please. Let's, uh, let's pull up your food log and see where you are at as far as the 80, 20. <laughs> sure. Let's, let's, let's do, do, do a little math. Let's make it quick so that, cause this is bad podcasting. You can't show the people what oh, we're Oh, it at. sounds like somebody's making No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show it to you. Um, all so right, go to so your yesterday. yesterday. Right. So how many calories are you currently eating right, right now? Right now I am currently eating 2,200. Okay. So you're, that's, you're in a, the, Caloric. you're in the deep of your fat yes, loss yes. right now. All right. Caloric. So this was yesterday. And again, sorry, you guys, this is bad, bad podcasting. Um, we'll try and explain as much as we can. So, um, what do you want to look at? So you're having steak and eggs in the morning. For breakfast. So that's yes. essentially that those are whole foods. You're mm-hmm. having steak and you're having eggs. Is there anything else in that meal? Um, no, I think, uh, I put a little bit of hot sauce in there. Okay. So those are all whole foods. So that's yeah. great. And that was about 400 of those calories. Yep. Um, your lunch, it looks like it was also 
uh, rice and steak. Yeah. Man, Hawaiian a lot of steak rice. there. <laughs> but these are whole foods. Yep. You're, you're crushing it. Yep. So that's another about 400 or so calories. Yep. And then your next meal was um, a, a smoothie. smoothie. And you had some fruit, some spinach, some flax seeds, and a protein powder. Correct. So, I mean, those are all whole foods. Your, your protein powder, some might argue that that is a little bit more on like the process side, but I consider that a whole food yeah. because it is, a, a, we use very like, um, you know, single ingredient types of things. We don't use a lot of fillers in yeah. the type of And now of to my, use. the reason I had that was because I had a busy day. I had not been able to get in a ton of calories. Therefore, I figured, okay, a smoothie, great way to add some flax seeds, great way to add some um, spinach, uh, some protein powder, some fresh fruit. And it just, it made it quick, easy, um, and obviously delicious. So, yeah. Yeah. And then your next meal, it looks like your dinner, you had a steak stir fry. A lot of red meat yesterday. Yeah, a lot of red meat. I mean, there's nothing wrong <laughs> yes, with that. Red it meat was, is, um, is very nutrient steak, dense. Steak, veggies, um, and then uh, basically like Some fried rice. rice. Yep. Nice. So yeah, those were all whole foods, steak, veggies, and rice. Thanks, Coach Vanessa. I, I appreciate you. I'm giving you a lot of validation <laughs> here. And then it looks like your... Um, Last year's snack here, you had a, a rice cake yep. with some almond butter and some blackberry preserves and then some granola as well. Correct. So realistically here, I mean, the only like true, what I would consider into that 20% mm -hmm. would be technically the rice cake and the uh, granola, mm -hmm. which that in and of itself is making up about about 350 or so calories. Yeah. So 350 out of your 2200, you are under the 80, 20, you dun, are dun, dun. crushing it. Nice. Approved by Coach Vanessa. And now I will say, of course, can I improve things? Absolutely. Like I ate a ton of rice. I ate a lot of red meat. So there's a lot of variation that I could add into it. But like you said, for the most part, if you're averaging that 80-20 rule, it works out. And now there's days where I've had, you know, chocolate bars in our, in our freezer, right? And I freaking love them. Um, but yes, it's it's the average. It's um, it, it's just staying within those parameters. But at the end of the day, obviously, I have you to kind of keep me accountable, but I also have my coach. So it makes things easier so I can just go in execute and it's like second nature exactly yeah so man I get an I get a gold star today for podcasting yeah I, I was curious I'm like I'm, we're gonna put you on the spot and see no you I've been it. listen I've been dialed in these last couple of weeks babe it, yeah well honestly for all of our listeners I would encourage you you know if you are tracking right now like especially if you're a client and you are in a refined phase and you're working on this stuff pull up your food log be honest with yourself yeah. do the math see are you within that 80 20 rule or are you maybe is there a little bit of opportunity for improvement and this is a good thing if you're identifying an area of opportunity that you could improve on this you could improve that you know that 80 20 you could improve maybe like how you're tracking you could improve in making more of your I think meals my at hands home. are a little sweaty from that <laughs> <laughs> that audit there <laughs> but the, it's an opportunity for you to now just work on that a little bit more and guess what you're gonna see better results from yeah, that and that's yeah. exciting and, and you know what the coolest thing too is you know the fact that we were able to pull it up i could tell you exactly how much i was eating there was no guesstimation there was no guesswork out of there that i think is what makes the biggest difference too exactly awesome so well that pat was myself on the back here that was a uh, mistake number one that i see people making in terms of not being able to see their weight loss results is that they are not consistent or accurate enough now mistake number two is you are spread too thin. You are giving 10% of your effort to 10 different things instead of actually giving 100% of effort Ooh. into any one thing. And I, I want to say, like, I completely realize that we all have busy lives. And I know so many people have way busier lives than I do. You know, like we had our client team call last night and, you know, there was a client that was on there and she was expressing of like, she's working 50, 60 hours a week in her job. She has four kids all under the age of five. Um, she's just doing so many different things, trying to keep up with their schedules and her own schedule. But yet she was talking about how she's been consistently getting in her walks every night and she's been making so That's many awesome. improvements and all these different things. And so I want to emphasize that like it is possible if we are very, um, careful about how we are spending our time and we're not just spreading ourselves so thin that nothing is actually getting done. Cause I see this so, so often where there's just this pattern of a lot of women that will give too much of themselves. And what ends up happening when we give too much of ourselves is we end up disappointing other people because we're not able to show up as our best self for anybody. And we especially end up disappointing ourselves in that process too. So why is it like, why do we spread ourselves so thin? Why do you think it is? For me, um, 
because we have no idea what we need to be doing. You want to try to do a little bit of everything and you end up falling short. And like you said, you stop blaming yourself. You start blaming other things. But at the end of the day, you're not even doing the right things that were going to help you get to where you want to go. Yeah. Lack of clarity. I think that's a good one is like not being very clear on what it is that you really want. Maybe you're like, yeah, I want to lose weight. Like I want the weight loss results. That's why I clicked on this episode. But when you really think about it, you're like, that's not really a priority for me right now. It's just kind of like, oh yeah, that sure. I I take it. Like that would be nice, but like, it's not really a priority for me right now. And I also think a big one is that people tend to, you know, involve themselves in too many things because they don't want to have FOMO. They're Mm -hmm. like, oh, there's an opportunity to do anything. I'm going to do it. And so it's like, if somebody asks me to do something, yes, I'm in. Somebody invites me to a social event. Absolutely. I'm there. You know, oh, there's a work opportunity. Yep. I'll, I'll do it. And they're just really signing themselves up for too much. They're being too much of a yes, yes, man. Yeah, yes, man. Um, I think that there's a lot of people that are also just addicted. Or yes, woman. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> good, good, good catch there, babe. Um, but I think there's a lot of people that are also just addicted to that, like, go, go, go Chaos. piece of life. I know I've, I've definitely been there myself. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm guilty of this one for sure. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm not agreeing, (laughs) whatever. (laughs) Um, I think another one that happens for a lot of people is that we just end up stuck in the pattern and we aren't actually taking a moment, stepping back and like interrupting the patterns that we're in, in our lives. And if that resonates with you, I want this to be your pattern interrupt that you don't have to just continue to do the same things over and over because it's the way you've always done them. You don't have to continue to busy yourself and like spread yourself super thin because that's just how life has always been for you. You can change your life. You can change how you spend your time at any moment. You are in control. There's nothing that you have to do other than just like breathing. Like that is the only thing that you have to do right now. Anything else is your decision. So really going back to like what Omar was saying is a lot of us just don't have clarity. You need to get clear on what is really a priority for you, what you really want to do, what you really need to do and focus on those things. Yeah. Um, I think for me, especially, I don't know, as a guy, I don't know, maybe you, you can probably relate to this, but what I always am guilty of is I see what other people are doing online or on social media. And I'm like, oh, well, if that guy looks like that and he's don't, he's jump roping, I must need to jump rope in order to look like that, right? But what I don't see is that this guy has maybe had 10, 15 years of bodybuilding experience or training in the gym or whatever, you know, his training regimen is, or what I don't see is, you know, how methodical he is when it comes to his nutrition. And I get the perspective that it's the jump rope or it's the, you know, sprints that he's doing, or it's the, I don't know, the, uh, whatever next uh, fad training or diet out there is. And that's what I, I put too much emphasis on that. And I forget that I'm like, oh, everybody has their own little path. Everybody has their own little journey. Like point being, I just went to um, a CrossFit gym not too long ago, just because I, I really enjoy it. And I think it's great. However, when I look at it, I'm like, I was so dumb for a lack of a better word when I was doing CrossFit myself because I thought that's what was going to get me jacked like the CrossFit guys I see on TV, right? When in reality, there's such a much easier way to do that with proper strength training, proper nutrition. Not that I'm jacked now, but I'm like, I, I am, I have so much, so much better. Uh, I have a such, excuse me, I have a much better physique now and I can always go back to CrossFit, but I'm doing CrossFit because it's fun. I'm doing it because it, you know, I enjoy the camaraderie. I enjoy the people that are there, not because it's my weight loss approach or my solution to gaining the weight that they're losing the weight that I want. So again, it's comparing yourself to others and seeing, you know, where they're at now. And maybe they use a gimmick or a, or a fad diet or whatever, or a, a particular jump rope, whatever it is. It's like, oh, that's what I need to do because that's what got them the results. And then I forget about their whole journey and what they've gotten or what they've done to get to that point. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's getting distracted by what you see from other people for sure. There you go. You, 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 uh, summarized my like two minute rant in like three words. I know you too well. Yeah. But you know, if you're, if you're finding like any of this is resonating with you, I would encourage you to first off, become really aware of the things that actually bring you joy, that actually Mm. fill your cup, because there's probably so many things right now that are draining you identify first what are the things that actually what fills your cup um <laughs> now i'm being put on the spot 
Uh, I mean, honestly, like just going on walks, being outdoors. Hanging just, out with your husband. Uh, that was what I was going to say okay, next. Good. good. I'm just, just checking. Yeah. Just spending time with you, like, you know, hanging out with Zoe, hanging out with our family. Yeah. Like that's the stuff that I just really does fill my cup. Yeah. I think I mean, more than that, anything. You said that on, on Sunday after we basically had done all of those things. You're like, oh, I just had such a great day. Yeah, I, was I was like, like today was a perfect day. <laughs> and he was like, Really? He's like, you didn't do was, anything. He was like, we didn't do much. I'm like, it was perfect. It was my dream <laughs> I was day. Like, Please don't say that. People are gonna think we're boring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, identify what are the things for you that fill your cup up, and then you know, also take note of the things that maybe are currently in your calendar or that you're just like spending your time on that are draining for you. And of course, there's gonna be things that like you you know maybe need to do in your life like not everything you do every second of your day is going to fill your cup it's natural that there's going to be an ebb and a flow but if right now you are completely just draining your cup and you're feeling drained you're feeling low energy and for that reason now you're not able to achieve your weight loss results because if you're drained there's going to be other holes that start popping up happening but if you are completely draining yourself, you need to identify what are the things that I could be doing that fill my cup? What are the things that I am doing that fill my cup? And then what are the things that I am doing that are draining my cup? And then look at what you can do to just actually start to rearrange things. Are there things that you're, you know, have on your list or have on your calendar that are just like a little tick in the box for you? Like you do it because you feel like you have to do it or because you've always done it. Can you really question those patterns that you have in your life and reevaluate? Do I have to be doing this? Could somebody else be doing this? Is it even necessary to do it at all? Is there another way to do it? Just get curious and question these things. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, also I would encourage you, we kind of alluded to this alluded to this before when we were talking about being a, a yes man or a yes woman, but <laughs> <laughs> you're so lame, uh, but I would really encourage you to, you know, really channel your inner Vanessa and say no to social obligations more often. I'm, I'm great at this. You are you very guys. good at it. I'm, I'm the worst. I'm like, I want to go. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be exhausted, but yeah, I'll, I'll go with you. I'll we, go for a couple of This is why we balance each other out very well because he will say yes to everything. And I am pretty much going to say no to almost everything. And then I have to remember if, okay, like, can, do I want to say yes to this or not? So together we say maybe, and then we just don't show up. <laughs> <laughs> but the reality is like, you don't have to, and you don't have to participate in social obligations that aren't serving you. Yeah. Like you are 100% allowed to say no and to really only do the things that fill your cup or fill your family's cup. Because like we were just saying, where Omar and I are a little bit different in some of the things that fill our cups or like things that we want to do, things that we say yes to. So it's important to identify that. Like if you're in a relationship or if you have a family, identify, like have this conversation with everybody in the family and see what fills and drains different people's cups and then find a balance because different people are going to have different things that drain them or give them energy. So really identify what those things are so that you can ultimately protect your own energy so that you can show up for the people in your life the way you want to show up. And most importantly, you can show up for yourself the way you want to show up for yourself. Yeah. Because that's what we're ultimately talking about here. If you cannot show up for yourself, you are never going to see the weight loss results that you want. Yeah. And just to reiterate, basically my biggest weakness is that I care too much for people. Is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's All right, exactly Let's move what on to the next one. Cool. Um, yep. So that <laughs> <laughs> number three, this is our third and final mistake that I see most often causing people to not see the weight loss results they want. And that is you are simply doing the wrong things. And you, you know, this could be a lot of different things. It might be that like maybe, and this isn't so applicable, I think to our clients necessarily, but I see this oftentimes with women who come to us for help, come to us for guidance and are, you know, maybe using free resources and different things, but they might just have things a little bit off. Maybe it's simply that they set their calorie target too low or too high or their protein too low or too high, or, you know, maybe they're doing too much cardio or you know not enough strength training or too much or too little overall or you know maybe they're simply focusing on the wrong things they're like focusing on what i call the minors the you know the supplements the like what exercises should i be doing like omar was saying of like oh you know maybe i should go do jump roping because i saw the jacked guy on instagram doing jump yeah, roping it was actually a girl that i saw that she like <laughs> does all these dance things i'm like oh maybe i need to do jump roping <laughs> oh <my laughs> but God. that's what it is but yeah you know maybe it's like you're getting 
shiny object syndrome and you're seeing people doing different things on Instagram. You're like, oh, maybe I should do that. Maybe mm-hmm. I should do that. Or like, what's the best exercise to grow my booty? And it's like, instead of actually just getting consistent with going to the gym, you're focusing too much on, you know, which exercises should I be doing? Or maybe you're focused too much on things being organic and you're like, oh my gosh, I need everything to be organic, non-GMO, you know, perfect food quality, but you're not even paying attention to the amount of calories you're eating or the amount of, you know, what your macro breakdowns are. That's where it's like, I would encourage you, of course, those things, you know, they matter at the end of the day, we can dial those things in, but those are the minor things. And we can't major in the minors. We need to focus on the majors. We need to focus on the most important things and make sure that those are dialed in first. So that's going to be like, um, sleep, you know, are you getting enough sleep overall? Is the quality of your sleep good? Um, stress management. Stress management, absolutely. Freaking lately, if you're, you know, if you're focusing so much on, on getting all of your food organic, but you're completely stressed to the the max, and you know, you're focused on like, what exercises should I be doing? Like, am I doing the right ab exercises to make sure I have my flat tummy? But yet you're like stressed out to the max with your family. That's n- you're not going to get the results you want at the end of the day. So, like you were, you're saying, stress management, sleep. Um, hydration is a big one. Are you drinking enough water? Like that's huge. Um, are you, you know, like we already kind of talked about this, but are you actually hitting your macros or your calorie targets? If you're not actually hitting those numbers, like that's going to be way more important at the end of the day when it comes to weight loss. And then of course, you know, we've talked about this already, but that kind of 80, 20 rule, are you eating, you know, mostly nutrient dense whole foods? Are you eating 80% nutrient dense whole foods? Those really are like your big macro things that really need to be dialed in before other things. So this is where I just see so often people are focusing on the wrong things or they're doing the wrong things. They might have like what they're doing might be overall correct, but the actual how might be a little bit off. And even just that little bit off, if we can just kind of move the needle a little bit, that can be the difference maker between whether you get results or you don't. So I, like you kind of mentioned this before, but this is really where that external guidance and just coaching and really help can really, really assist people. Cause sometimes we just need a little bit of clarification and guidance on like what you need to be doing for your body because it is different for different people. Can I drop something too? The other thing that, I mean, you've dropped so many knowledge bumps, but the other thing too that is important to bring awareness to is the how, right? Because I think that's the biggest question for a lot of people. It's like, Vanessa, well, how do I know if I'm eating too much? How do I know if I'm eating too little? How do I know when to change things up? How do I know if I'm actually doing the right workouts? And while I would love to tell you, you know, do this, do that, do that. It's so hard because at the end of the day, whether it's us chatting with people um, via Zoom or chatting, you know, on in the DMs or whatever, we're only working out the information that they've given us so far. So in order for us to be like, okay, this is exactly what you need to do and you need to do this, this and that. It's hard for any one person to tell you without knowing your dieting history, without knowing what you're doing on an average daily basis. So that's why it's tough to just you know, give something right now and say, Hey, you need to do X, Y, Z, because at the end of the day, everybody's not only different, but they've also had different dieting experiences. They have a different body. They have different issues, different symptoms and different goals. So that's why it's so important to, you know, ask questions and, and, you know, um, again, like reach out to Vanessa. She's so great about being on social media, but it's so good to just ask for yourself specifically and not emphasize what works for the masses or what works for, you know, people on online or whatever you see on social media. Yeah, this is why, I mean, you and I, we obviously, we've always worked with coaches ourselves, even though we obviously know all of this stuff, you still, even at like the highest level of knowledge when it comes to nutrition, you need to be able to get out of your own head and have somebody else objectively look at all the factors and really just take the reins and tell you what to do for your body. It's honestly, it's so important to just be guided toward what is going to be right for you. So that's where, you know, I, of course I would love to say like, oh, you know, come join our coaching. At, but at this point in time, unfortunately we are on a wait list right now. You know, this is just a very busy time of year. A lot of people really want to, you know, feel good for summer and like really get things dialed in before the holidays and before the new year's like right around the corner. So it, there is a wait list going right now, but if that's something that you want to jump on, just shoot me a DM on Instagram at Vanessa G fitness. You can just DM me wait list and I'm more than happy to put you on it so that you are one of the first to know when we do open up some spots and you can kind of get a first opportunity to jump on into that. The but, amount of people that I've talked to that are like, Hey, can you guys help me? And I'm like, I would, I would love to, but unfortunately we're on the, on the wait list and people are like, 
seriously, like right now, like this is exactly when I need you guys. And I'm like, I know, but so does everybody else. And unfortunately yeah. our hands are tight. So those, I, I can imagine those spots are going to go super fast. So um, turn on the post notifications is normally what I tell people too, because mm -hmm. you're so good about putting stuff on social media. Um, and we'll reach out to everybody on a first come first serve. But if, of course, if you can see the post before we get to you, then you kind of claim the spot. And on, anyways, it's more efficient that way. So yeah. if you guys are interested, turn on those post notifications for Vanessa. But I hope that this podcast gave you some clarity, gave you some kind of aha moments of what you might need to do to make sure that you can get the best possible weight loss results on your weight loss journey. But we will be back next week with another great episode. All right. See you guys.